you join me with the latest all-in-one motherboard from Biostar. Wait a minute, we've seen this case before. Yes, today we are using this case again to do an upgrade build. Upgrade? Is that really necessary? I mean, I've been riding the same bike for 31,000 kilometers. It is very necessary, you'll see why later, and don't watch videos on your bike. Oh yeah, good point, not a good idea to watch YouTube on the bike, got it. So in the box we get a very handy sheet telling us how to clean your PC, because that's something we frequently do. The IO backplate, and I'm glad to see more motherboards include this on the motherboard, because it's a pain in the second hand market. Now, driver CD, not going to use it, manual, not going to use it. Two SATA cables, very nice gesture. Ah, and here it is. The latest all-in-one motherboard from Biostar. So this board has an onboard um, AMD processor. It's the last of the Bulldozer um, series with uh, four cores. Now, Biostar has been making these boards with CPUs on board for a long time. In fact, there you can see a very old Biotech board with a 386 from AMD on board. So they've been doing this for a very, very long time. In goes our little storage device, in this case a M.2 SATA SSD. nice and secure and the by now well known H702 case from Huntkey smallest ITX case I could find so one thing I don't understand is why on these IO shields do they not remove all the bits if they know that this board only comes with one option and that is onboard sound but anyways clips into place with those nice protruding standoffs, something I really like about this case and I have ranted and raved about before. Yay, I managed to screw in a motherboard without stuffing up. the cheapest RAM I could find, Kingston Value RAM. It's only got modules on the, or chips on the one side, so you know this is very cheap. Clicks in nicely. Front panel connector almost just didn't fit there with the SATA. Very snug fit. Power is connected, getting the SATA in, so we're almost ready to go. Now, cable management here is non-existent, but it's going to work all the same. Nice and shiny. Let's power it up and see what happens. Ah, it works. Everything's there. All our RAM. Process is running nicely. So there were a few options in this BIOS that I realized changing it would just result the machine in not booting. Um, we'll get to those later. And what's a new build without flashing the BIOS? In this case I'm flashing it with the version that came from the factory because there is no newer version. But meh, let's flash it anyway. Even the cat gets excited about it. <coughs> Here we go. Running nicely. And we can load Windows. So this screen actually comes with a warning telling you to not change anything because if you do, it doesn't boot. I found out the hard way. 
We are in Windows cloning from OneDrive to our onboard M.2 and everything's running nicely. And the CPU doesn't run too hot. Everything looks good. So previously I modified my last integrated biostar with this huge fan which ended in disaster. Um, but in this case the small 10 millimeter high fan is doing a perfect job. And it also looks rather good. Beautiful design by Biostar with their Bumblebee theme. And maxing this out um, on Boink, it never goes above 75 degrees. And you can see it's a pretty good improvement over the old APU at the bottom and the new one at the top. So the reason why I had to upgrade is after I sold the old AM1, which we did in the last build, I used this um, Unify with the J1800 Celeron as my home server and um, well it just didn't have the single performance for one of the most important tasks which is Zenotic. Just look at that packet loss and that is merely because it maxes out the CPU. This is a rather complex map um, and it just becomes unplayable with exceptionally high packet loss as the processor is trying to keep up with everything. And here we are on the new processor with absolutely no such issues. No packet, well, one packet, but that's normal, that's just comms, that's definitely not the CPU. So, I would say this was a very good upgrade, I'm happy to have this machine as my home server. And one final trick I tried, seeing as this is running off 12 volts, I got one of those 12 volt backup UPSs that you're supposed to use for your router. So I got the biggest one I could find and I'm running this computer off it. And despite this computer being a, having a 5 amp power supply, this thing only allows 2 amps, but it never cut out um, and it lasts for well over an hour. So I would say this is a huge success and that the machine is very power efficient. So that's it. Uh, just another build, in this case one with a good purpose. Hope you enjoyed this video.